All right, everyone, if you look past the family-friendly sort of sanitized headlines with regards to Facebook, they're, what they're saying is this. Facebook has a war room set up ahead of the elections to fight misinformation. You know what that actually means if we look at sort of the groups that Facebook has been purging, including, by the way, one page on there that was recently banned. Uh, it was a page that was like openly celebrating when Alex Jones was depersoned, and now they've got like an article. Oh, why was that banned? I was such a good person. It's like... Hey, get used to it. You're the ones that asked for all this fucking censorship from these corporations. Uh, here's the funny part. Instead of war room to fight misinformation, why don't we de-newspeak this and look at it for what it really is? A multi-billion dollar multinational corporation sowing state propaganda. Oh, that was easy. See, when you present it that way, people get a different feel for it. The thing is, you, you've got a situation where people have been mind-numbed. So that when things are presented to them in, in a certain way they automatically accept it. So it's fighting misinformation or it's counter-propaganda, as though that means anything other than propaganda meant to stop another propaganda, as though it meant benevolent instead of potentially malevolent propaganda stopping benevolent propaganda. Works both ways. Uh, it's a corporation. Facebook's not special because it happens to have, like, again, family-friendly, round-cornered, safe logo, and it talks a great deal about being family-friendly and we're going to fight hate and stuff. That's bullshit. Corporations can't be moral actors. So they've got like a couple dozen people in this room, and they've got an American flag up on the wall, which is probably the funniest thing ever, considering that they are literally attempting to fight uh, against groups of U.S. citizens in many cases. I know they make a big game, uh, game of it, uh, labeling things, mislabeling things, and talking about how it's fighting like foreign state you know, actors, like Russians, basically. Now, the Russians are colluding to fuck around with the midterms. We must stop them. Glory to the United States. By the way, we're progressive. At the same time, a lot of the uh, groups they favor are like pro-open borders and weird shit like that. So that's very funny. Um, so the American flag up there is like, it's almost too ironic for me. It's almost not funny because of the uh, sheer level of irony. But then they've got these people and they're like, well, we're going to fight misinfo. We realize how important it is for us to do this. No, it's not. You didn't before. Nobody ever had a problem with it till 2016. You have a problem with it now because someone you didn't like won. And you didn't expect them to win because all of the intelligent engineers and analysts and everything else you hired expected Trump to lose. And then you, you got yourselves worked up. See, the thing is, because they never thought Trump could win, they turned him into a one-dimensional villain. They turned him into Hitler, basically. Then he won. Well, shit, they've already worked themselves up into a tizzy about how supposedly this person is Satan incarnate. No, that's not actually the case, and that propaganda is beginning to slowly wear off. Look at the Mueller probe. <laughs> oh, this was a funny book. As an aside here, not to get off track, did you see the Politico article from this morning with regards to Mueller? Like, oh, PSA about the impending Mueller release. It'll suck, basically. In other words, it's not going to tell you that Trump uh, broke the law. And, and then they're saying, well, part of it. Part of the special counsel's findings may never be released to the public. That's code for they're going to find that he did nothing wrong, but it's buried in the papers somewhere. Trust us. It's just classified because Trump is evil. That's basically what it boils down to. And Facebook, uh, it keeps purging groups. Cop block. You remember Cop Block? You know, from years ago, very, very popular at the time. Uh, I remember, I think it was like the Ron Paul era when st first started uh, coming into, the, into vogue. This is a group that's like, hey... Uh, it police, the police cop block and stuff where you record the police, uh, if they're breaking the law, you know, basically here's what to do. So the lawyer supplies and stuff, they got banned. Why? Eh, Facebook says that they were manipulating search results. It's interesting though, if you look at a list of all these sites, what do, what do all of them have in common? Not one stands for neoliberalism. They're all either far left, like actual progressives, like really far left. Uh, you know, slash commie, Antifa, stuff like that, or they're libertarian or they're conservative. None of them are neoliberal groups, not a single one. So statistically, you're saying that it's likely that not a single neocon or neolib group on Facebook manipulates results. Only groups from the outside. La mainstreamers, no, impossible. They would never do it. No, I'll tell you what it is. It's a sampling bias because they're not going through those groups to try to police them. Because the SPLC and the ADL and groups like that and ShareBlue and Media Matters and Snopes that they've put on there to allow them to literally decide who can or cannot be on your newsfeed, those groups don't care about neoliberal fronts. 
There's all sorts of abuse all day on those groups. But they're never going to get purged <laughs> it's for a reason. So Facebook will keep purging people in the, you know, the run up to the midterms and they'll keep it up after. If you think that this is just the midterm struggle, you're making the same mistake as people who assume that the Alex Jones depersoning involved the midterms. No, it didn't. You, do you honestly think in a million years that the average person watching Alex Jones on any platform is going to vote like they're, they're straight Dem voters. They really love Nancy Pelosi. Of course not. So it's not affecting anyone. If anything, you're enraging people who are conservative by depersoning him. Uh, so it would actually be counterproductive. And they're smart enough to know this. No, the reason why is because of corporate competition. They don't want InfoWars on a news feed on Facebook. They don't want InfoWars to be tweeting out and out-competing CNN or something like that. Shepard Smith gets tired of that shit. Tucker Carlson. Yeah, Tucker Carlson, what a wonderful person. Uh, it's sort of like when I was talking to Shiva there, it's like pointing out, hey, he's not going to invite some, some independent candidate up there. He prefers, like, he prefers deal in that case. Uh, no, Facebook's war room is about misinfo itself. It's not about fighting misinfo. It's about replacing one set of info with another set within a subjective framework Politics, sociology, a lot of this shit's subjective. It's human opinion. That's all it'll ever be. They're purging uh, pages and suppressing material algorithmically based solely on opinion and subjectivity. When they claim an objective moral standard to that, totally wrong. People need to clean out their minds. That's about all. Peace out.